Hi friends, I'm Anna, thanks for being here today. I wanna to share a way to emboss with you today that you probably have never seen before. It's a really unique way of embossing. You don't have to have an embossing machine to do it. You just need a couple of little inexpensive tools and you can create a really unique look on your projects. Stick around at the end if you need a little positivity in your life, we're gonna talk about some positivity. Let's get started. To try this technique, you are going to need two things plus some kind of stamped image. You will need a foam mat of some sort. This is my stamp and pierce mat. And you need a stylus. You may have one of these that came with your scoring board or this is my take your pick tool. I absolutely love this thing. It has all different ends. I have a small stylus, a large stylus. There's another piece that can be inserted in here that has a spatula and a piercing tip. And then this end is my sticky tip that I use to apply gems and dots and pick up little pieces of paper that my fingers don't want to pick up and all kinds of things. So anyway, you'll need a stylus of some sort. So what I've done here, I stamped some balloons onto this paper and you can try this with all different images. Flowers are one of my favorites to do this with. So you may want to try some flowers, but you're going to stamp on one side of the paper and then flip it over. And actually, I take that back. We have to do something on this side before we flip it over. So I have already done this with the two large balloons. I'm just gonna show you quickly what to do with a small balloon. So I'll try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on. You just are going to press with your stylus and outline this. So you can try different effects. For right now, I'm just gonna outline this and show you what it looks like, and then we'll try another effect and I'll show you a little bit more. But let's flip this over, and I'm hoping you can see this. I believe you can. So I have outlined all three of those balloons with my stylus, and what do we have? We have our own little customized embossed piece of paper right here. Now, this doesn't have any stamping on it, but I'm gonna show you several different ways to kind of change this up, and then, if this is too tedious for you or you're not interested, I actually have a really cool way to make some similar pieces a lot easier. I'm gonna show you in just a couple of minutes. So we could use this as is. We could use some blending brushes over the top to kind of highlight the color on these raised areas if we wanted to. Now let me show you another way. And if you want more of a filled in image, the way I like to do that is to do the outline first and then to go back and use a circular pattern. Now, of course, I am pressing on this while I'm doing this. The foam pad is important because it has some give in it and it allows you to press on that paper. We're basically just stretching out that paper a little bit to raise it, raise it up once we flip it up, Put, push it down. And then once we flip it over, then it appears to be raised up. So if you want to do a larger area, a more solid area, I like to do it this way with a circular pattern. And you can go back over it if you want. I think this kind of helps even it out a little bit. And then let's flip it over and see what this looks like. So you can see that that looks more like a solid balloon. So we could go back and do these this way if we want to. Let me show you one that I did with some stamping. So because these balloons are symmetrical, we can do kind of a fun technique with this. And on this card, can you see my embossing around the edges? So for this one, I actually did my outline outside of the balloons. On these, I did it right at the edge. But on this one, when I was going around the edges of the balloons, I went outside a little bit. I left a little bit of a border in between there. So then I flipped it over the way we're looking at it right now and I stamped the balloons right inside of there. So that's kind of another way you can play around with this. I'll show you one more that I did this way and then I wanna show you the pretty fun and exciting way of doing it a little bit easier. So here is a little truck punch. I shared a lot of cards here recently using this set. I absolutely love this set. I'll link to this and a few other things in the video description below if you want to take a look at uh, videos on this, my take your pick tool, and I may have some others down there. So I stamped this truck and then I 
laid it on my stamp and pierce mat and I used that stylus. For this one, I actually used the smaller stylus. I thought that would work a little bit better for this detail. And I just went over all of the stamped lines. I didn't do anything creative. I just went over those stamped lines. So this may be a little bit hard to see. I went over it with some blending brushes, hoping the ink would pick up some of those raised areas. But I don't know if you can see any of that detail or not, but I thought that was kind of a neat effect for just something different to try. Like I said, this works really neat. I've made some beautiful flowers in the past with this technique. That's something you could try out if you want to, but just look through your stamps and, and your supplies in your collection and look for something that you think would look neat with this when you press on that pattern, create that embossing, and then flip it over to the other side. So now, what actually inspired me to make this video is a couple of really cool new products I have. They're called hybrid embossing folders. So what they are is an embossing folder with a coordinating die set. Now, if you've seen these before, you probably love them because they create really cool effects. And if you haven't, I'm gonna show you right now. And I actually have two different ones. So we'll take a look at them and I have tons of card samples to show you here in just a few minutes. So we are going to look at this one. Uh, you can see lots of words that I have embossed using this embossing folder. This one is called Thoughtful Moments. So it comes with the embossing folder. It also comes with the die that we are going to use. So I have already run this through my machine with this embossing folder. Now what I'm going to do is run it through with the die. One large die, gotta love that, makes it easy to line it up. So let's line it up, we'll crank it through here and cut these out and I'll show you the results. Now once we get these cut, we can do more fun things with them. And I'll show you several different ways that I have used these. To create some neat effects. So let's take these off. And we get these amazing cutouts of the words. Aren't these neat? So we have thank you, oh happy day, get well just because, love you, celebrate. Lots of different options. Now, if you are new here, you may not have seen in the past I have shared that I love to create, one of my organizational tips in my craft area is to keep a tag box. This is a tackle box I found in my garage I did not ask my husband for permission to use it. I, just, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a use for that. I'm taking that. So I've sorted these and I have all these prepped tags ready and I've sorted them into occasions. So these are all congratulations like wedding and babies and things like that. Um, encouragement, thank you. We have birthday somewhere. We have some other ones, okay. So I love, I, I just got this, but I want to cut some more of these. You saw how quick and easy that is. I'm gonna cut some more and add them to my tag box to keep on hand and ready. So this is one of them. Let me show you the other one. This one is called Adoring Hearts. So we have the embossing folder, the coordinating die. It has all these cute little hearts that nest inside of the big hearts if I want to use them. But for what I'm going to show you, I only use the embossing folder in this one large heart die. So after we have embossed, we get this look. And then after we have cut them out, we get lots of these right here. So let's look at a few ways to use them. And we are going to be finishing up this card right here. I'm gonna show you two ways to kind of step these up a little bit. I did use some of these plain on the sample cards. I'll show you in just a minute. But if you want to add some color, if you want those greetings to stand out a little bit more, 
here are two ways of doing that. So I'll bring in my scrap paper so I don't make a mess here. One way is to grab some blending brushes and add a little bit of color that way. So I'll pick up a little bit of the color here. I always like to remove some of it on my scrap paper first. And if you are going to do this, you may want to do add the color before you do your die cutting. So emboss the piece and then add the color to the entire piece or just to one or two of the hearts before you cut them out. The reason I say that is because when you're doing this and holding it, trying to hold it, it's just a really small space for doing this. So it might be easier if you do this before you die cut them out, but you don't have to. You can do what I'm doing right now. So isn't that nice? Now we have the raised area is a little bit darker because it picked up more of that ink. So that's one way you can step these up. You could, gosh, you could apply color in a lot of different ways. Now I'm thinking you could like color with markers. You could do all kinds of fun things with these if you want to. But let's look at one other way. Bring in some Calypso Coral ink this time and my new brayer. If you have not used brayers before, uh, they're pretty fun. You can do some really neat techniques with them. So maybe I will compile some brayering techniques here at some point and share a video on that. So the way you want to ink a brayer is to pr press, but not real hard, and lift. As you get to the end of the ink pad, you want to lift. And just do this several times to make sure you have ink all the way around there. Once you have the ink on the brayer, you can play around with this and how hard to press. I have pressed too hard several times and my ink not only inked the words here, the raised parts, but the ink got on the lower areas as well, which is not what I was going for because I want the words to stand out, not blend in. So brayering is another way to add some color to these pieces. So let's use these pieces. We're going to finish a card here and then I want to share with you my other card samples. And I will mention this as I'm finishing this up that all of the pattern papers on these cards I'm going to share with you over the next minute or two, all of the pattern papers are ones that you can earn free right now. Our celebration is going on. I call it the happiest time of year uh, with Stampin' Up! because anytime you shop, if you spend $50 or more, you get to choose a free item. So we have lots of free item choices. We have several papers and several different stamp sets, and there are some really neat ones included. So these papers you're going to be seeing are from several different sets. Uh, this is one, and I'll bring in my other card samples here. Actually, we'll be organized. I'll bring in the ones that are from the same paper pack. Uh, so here's another one. I just used a piece of this pattern paper. I love this bird paper. I think it's beautiful. I popped up that get well sentiment with a little bit of ribbon behind and thought I, this is one of my favorites. I love this uh, with blue and the purple and the birds. So this one is from the, let's see, Flight and Airy paper pack. One of those ones you can get free right now with a $50 purchase. Let's look at another one. Here is one. I kept super simple. I didn't use any pattern paper. I did use, there's some vellum in the background here, but it has been quite a while since I've made a plain white card. I love to make plain white cards and I love the way they look when I get done. Uh, but thought I would show you, you could just cut these out, apply them, and you can do these same things with the hand embossed technique as well that I shared at the beginning. Uh, especially if it's, like a stamp, the stamp that you use to do your embossing pattern, if you use a stamp, uh, especially if it coordinates with a punch, uh, you could make some really neat pieces like this with that hand embossing as well. So here is one. 
here is these came from the paper pack sunny days two different examples and these give you some ideas of ways to use that pattern paper in your cards as well i love to do these panel cards where i just take that paper cut them into different size pieces that fit on the card and they make a really neat background with not very much effort so this one, I used that greeting tag and I used blending brushes to add the ink. On this one, I added it with the brayer. And here is one more. This paper pack is called Most Adored, I believe. It has beautiful metallic prints on the one side and then colored prints on the other side. But I added the color to these hearts with the brayer. I added the color to the greeting with my blending brush and then just put that one piece of paper in the background with a few sequins to decorate. So some fun techniques for different things you can try with embossing, different things you can try with your pattern papers. Hopefully these give you some ideas of things you can try in your craft area. I'll have links to all the products and to celebration in the video description below so you can take a look now. Let's, uh, I'll flip my camera around. Let's talk about some positivity. So what is it with us and the negative thoughts that get in our heads? What is that about? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's the, it must be the things that we are filled with every day from the world, the messages that are sent on TV and social media and the things that we hear. And we, we have to take control of the things that go on in our minds, right? Uh, it's a really easy place for the enemy to attack and we can have this battle going on and nobody even knows and nobody can try and drag us out of the battle because they can't see it. It's all going on in our head. So friends, we need, I, I would love for you to join me in trying something that I'm doing. It doesn't take much effort, uh, but just hang up something in your house somewhere that you'll see often that has positive affirmations about yourself on it. You can write these things yourself. Now, admitting or, or acknowledging positive things about yourself is very different from arrogance. And I feel like we have this idea that we can't say or believe good things about ourselves because it's being arrogant and it's not. Uh, not at all. There's a very big difference. But so I would love for you to get a piece of paper, write down some things about yourself. And I know that you make a difference. This is actually what I wanted to say first, but I get confused. Uh, you make a difference. And I don't know all of you, but I know that every one of you, there are ways that you make a difference for the people in your lives. I hear the stories you tell me about like all these amazing ministries you have with your cards and you share them with these people and you send them, you donate them and you do all these things and like all these other things you're involved with. And even if sometimes it's hard to come up with, sometimes it is very hard to realize the good we are doing. I will use myself as an example because I, you know, I know more about myself than other people. So, for a long time, I was making these videos and I wasn't getting a lot of feedback. And I'm like, there were times where I thought, why am I like, is anybody even watching? Why am I doing this? What's going on? And then I started hearing from some of you that I make a difference in your life. And I was shocked at first, like, I'm just making cards. I, I make a difference in your life. I make your life better. Uh, I, I was getting all these amazing comments and I had no idea. And it took a lot of them for me to realize what I'm doing is actually make a difference, making a difference. So I understand that unless you are getting a lot of feedback, which we often do not get uh, a lot of positive feedback, I understand it's really hard to let those things sink in of what we are doing that is good. Oftentimes we get more negative feedback than good, or we let that one negative comment, that one negative person uh, consume our thoughts when those people don't represent the majority. So 
write down some good things about yourself. Hang it on your mirror, hang it by your kitchen sink and look at those things and repeat those things to yourself every day. Now, I pulled this out, I found this. This is something I've done when my Stampin' Up! team has been together in the past. Uh, hang up a sign that says, we love blank, and we fill in the blank with all the names in the room, because, and then we go around and we fill it in to provide some of those positive thoughts to people, and then they get to take it, take it home. So I just found this, I've never hung it up. It's been buried in my office because I'm not always completely organized. So I'm gonna hang this up and I'm going to add some things myself. I'm going to make myself write down some good things about myself. And I think I'm gonna hang it by my bathroom mirror. So let's fill our minds with positivity because that's what belongs there. Thanks for being here, friends. I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.